Did you know that there are over 100 HBCU institutions across America? Of that little more than 100, 30 to 35 of those institutions have golf programs. In an ever-expanding environment where the sport of golf is growing the game, Today, we are with founder and CEO, Rod Jackson. Rod is the founder of HBCU Golf. And so live from the Cannon Studios, Holly Springs, Georgia, welcome to another episode of the Tee to Green Golf Podcast. Rod, welcome to the Tee to Green Golf Podcast. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, Victor. Thanks. Well, we had the opportunity to meet. I believe it was in October. In fact, we were at an HBCU golf event um, just south of Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport here in Atlanta. Um, We talked a little bit. Uh, I learned a little bit more about HBCU golf and the great work that you are doing there to support those programs that have golf, to support those institutions that are having golf. And so today, we just want to dive a little deeper into that for the TD Green Golf Podcast community. So introduce yourself to the TD Green Golf Podcast community. How did we get here? (laughs) Yes, sir. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Rod Jackson. I am an Atlanta native also, Um, grew up born and raised in Atlanta. I uh, grew up in the game of golf uh, starting at the age of 15, Um, you know, and, and, you know, I took a love for the sport, you know, at a very, very early age and process with that. And um, here we are. Uh, I don't want to age myself, but um, (laughs) About 23 years later, here we are. Here we, here we are. So everybody can do the math themselves. But, right, right. Or they can see my gray hair. Is that, you know, either or. <laughs> well, listen, we don't get old. We just get wiser. So, you know, I think the good thing is that in, in your story is a story of many. We, at least for some, we we are introduced to the game early, and it's just a game. Uh, you have realized that it's more than just a game. There's an opportunity for us to be in it, but it's a business as well. And so when we think about this transition that you've gone through, you know, how were you introduced to the sport and what was the inspiration around HBCU golf? Sure. So um, let's, let's go back to dating myself at at age 15. So, um, as a kid, you know, growing up, uh, I played all sports, mm-hmm. baseball, basketball, football, mm-hmm. um, during summertime, we would play in the backyard. Uh, we had a basketball goal. So we played yeah. basketball and we, after an hour, we played baseball. Right. After another hour, we played football. Um, however, this one time my father had some golf clubs in our shed that he got from a yard sale okay. and, um, playing with my nest on neighbors. We, uh, took the golf clubs, went to our other neighbor yard and, uh, we had a a little water hole in our front yard. So we put a stick in that hole and, uh, we went to our neighbor yard, sorry neighbor, but we, uh, dug up our grass and hit golf shots to the stick that was in our, our yard. And, um, from that point, uh, my next door neighbor went to the driving range at, uh, John A. White in Metro Atlanta, um, went to the driving range there and he said, Rod, you got to come try this. This is actually kind of fun on the, on the real right. real courts besides our front yard. Right. So, uh, you know, shout out to Justin. He he, <laughs> he locked me in, and uh, we went to the driving range. And that summer, um, I was headed to the ninth grade. Okay. So um, I joined the first T program that summer. And, um, Victor, that's where it started, man. Um, you know, I, I went from a beginning golfer to uh, – you know, understanding the game very quick in the summer was worth the time and uh, then eventually joined my high school golf team. Yep. Um, and, you know, really to kind of lead to the next part of your question, you know, where does the HBCU golf portion come in? Um, you know, I'm, I'm also a uh, 
product of HBCU, so Alabama A&M, mm-hmm. uh, normal Alabama. Huntsville in the house. Yeah, Huntsville. You know, if, if you want to get technical, it's normal, but <laughs> okay. but we'll claim Huntsville. All right. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, I, I attended college and um, played golf at, on the golf team four years there, Alabama A&M. And, um, you know, after that, my, my career just continued along the golf industry, mm-hmm. moving me out to Arizona. Mm-hmm. Um which was a lovely time, lovely place. Um, the opportunity I had out there was actually working at um, number one public facility out there, tr- okay. True North. Yep, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so that led me out there, um, gave me the opportunity to, you know, further my career in the, uh, in the, in the golf industry and even with the PGA at that time. And, um, you know, really the, Fast forward, you know, just transitioning from Arizona back here Mm -hmm. um, to Atlanta, uh, you know, I continuously have the opportunity to make a space and make a way um, for what I come from, from the HBCUs Mm -hmm. and combine it with what I was able to learn from Mm -hmm. working for one of the top management golf companies in the world. Yeah, and that's that's no doubt. And that's a really good story, Rod. And and as many of us know, especially our listeners, there are few names bigger than Troon right now. And so I can only imagine what that experience was like, especially being in what is arguably their backyard, right, which is that Phoenix metro area. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, what you're saying, that uh, Troon North was at that time the only golf course that they owned and manage Mm. so you're exactly right there beautiful the the, the one thing that i want to do before we kind of move on is i want to go down this side street with you we are in an environment of growing the game and in previous episodes i've talked about how golf has been um, transparent i'm still still space for progress but they've been transparent about talking uh, about growing the game and, 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 and kind of the bullet points behind that have been in communities of color that will allow the sport to sustain itself and even grow. When you think about that 15 year old who really was 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 really wrapped into the traditional sports that most children of color play. And I know soccer has found its way into that uh, that 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 portfolio of, of popular sports. What would you say to the T to Green Golf Podcast community, adults, parents, and their children that moved you towards trying golf, and then golf took you to some place that maybe basketball, baseball, and football wouldn't have taken you? Absolutely. Um... I will say, you know, this this first part is probably for the parents. Um, I was ready to try out for the football team in high school Mm -hmm. um, in in 11th grade. And, you know, that's after two years, freshman and and sophomore year playing golf in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, My father played football, um, you know, basically made it to uh, NFL team as well. Okay. And he got hurt. Yep. And uh, never had an NFL career. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad wouldn't let me play football in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, no, you're going to play golf. You got something special here. And mm-hmm. I think from his perspective, he knew the physical labor that mm-hmm. was going to put on me. Mm-hmm. Um, at this age again. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Know? Um my, my bones might be a little sensitive, I guess, but <laughs> right. I, I appreciate that. But, you know, that led me to um, really focusing on golf. And, you know, I, I think, you know, from a parental perspective, um, you know, all these sports are great, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and specifically football. You know, like I said, my father speaking from his experience, mm-hmm. maybe there was some uh, fear because of injuries, physical mm-hmm. injuries. You mm-hmm. know, we've all seen some traumatic injury injuries with football and you know it's a great sport i have many friends that play it and um you know it's awesome but um there is another opportunity um 
to have to have to be athletic, to be competitive, and find a lot of the things that you might find in the sport of football or basketball or baseball on another sport that's not predominantly black. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for the kid perspective, um, to segue off of another sport that's not predominantly black, I would say um, as we continue along, you know, in these fresh 2024 year and going forward, um, it has not been predominantly black, but we are making a space. We are making a way. Uh, We are making it more comfortable for us. Um, You know, we are, finding, you know, some trends and everything like that, that, you know, we can relate to the sport um, versus what it's been in the past. And, you know, for the kids that will be listening in the, in the Tita Green community, um, just know that you can find that competitive spirit, that competitive edge in the sport of golf. I, um, and it, it might even hit a little different because you don't have teammates. Right. And, um, you know, when somebody beat you, uh, you don't go back in the locker room and, and have a team pep rally. Right. You talk within yourself. Right. And, um, you know, if uh, a lot of the guys that I know that actually play professional sports that play golf, um, you know, it's crazy. You can see like that competitive Absolutely. edge come out in them. And um, I think that's why a lot of professional athletes can really transition into the game of golf and pick it up very well because they go from having a team full of people that's, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, dependence on a lot of people to, to accomplish that goal to, man, this is all on me. Correct. And that competitive spirit come out and man, you'll be surprised how good they can be just from mentally knowing that this is all on them. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the the discipline and the grind that is necessary to be relevant in a team sport is that space is available in the sport of golf. I think you're absolutely right. And, and listen, I can speak for myself. Uh, I was given an opportunity to play professional basketball one level below the NBA um, coming out of my undergrad years. And, and so as I transitioned into golf, the – the the drive towards excelling for me i could i could relate that to what i needed to do to be relevant to play with the players at the level that i played at so mm-hmm. i think that's uh it's a great message and again uh i am apt to encourage the td green golf community to put a paper clip on points in episodes and I think this is another one um, for parents and their children is the rigors of our traditional sports are what they are. Uh, I think what we've seen and what we've heard from our CEO of, of HBCU Golf, Rod Jackson, is that you can take that same drive combined with the intellect that is our kids as they go through these academic institutions you can be competitive, and as we've heard, um, it will take you to spaces maybe sooner uh, like it has for Rod. Going and working for a Troon and then doubling back to ATL Georgia to create the business that he has. I think that's a, it's a really, really good segue, Rod, into our conversation today. Taking a look at the website... HBC Golf is an apparel business, and it's a portal for talented golfers. I love both. And so that's kind of why I'm accentuating apparel business and portal for talented golfers. What was your motivation behind creating the business? And then can you just give us a window into the levels of success for the apparel business and the talent portal sessions. Absolutely. So here we go. Yes, HBCU sir. Golf. Uh, first of all, let's start off with the website. It's hbcu.golf. Correct. Um, you know, dot .golf was a cool domain that I saw with the band. I was like, man, that would be pretty nice. So hbcu.golf, a little different from what everybody mentally kind of expect with right. .com. Right. Um, but what really motivated me to get this going is uh, once again, when I was living in Arizona, um, you know, my, I guess, you know, another 
kind of back to the the last question, the opportunities in golf. Uh, another business that I've uh, uh, come up and created mm-hmm. is uh, T Vents Golf Management, which organizes golf tournaments, which is how we met um, organizing that golf tournament. So, you know, first of all, there's, there's plenty of opportunity and plenty of space for people to be creative, entrepreneurial and, uh, whatever you have to do in this golf space. Um, that's a part of it. But, um, what really motivated me was running these golf tournaments and noticing the talent that we have out there now being in Arizona, um, the coaches know that's like golf heaven out there, mm-hmm. which means a lot of younger generation kids are golfing out mm-hmm. there. So running these tournaments, having this connection with all of the coaches that I do um, every year, I started receiving questions. Hey, Rod, do you know any young kids that might be talented enough to come to our HBCU? Got the question one too many times nice. and realized nice. there's a space for this. Good. Um, so here comes the creation of HBCU Golf. So also, you know, with the logo that, that we see of HBCU Golf, um, you know, I started thinking, you know, let me think about my experiences at HBCU Golf and, and you know, my time, my four years of playing, the friends I made, the camaraderie, mm-hmm. and – look at the teams that I'm currently seeing in the golf tournaments that I'm running. Mm -hmm. So the creation of the logo hit immediately and said, you know what? Simple plain, but definition. Yes. And what the logo means um, inside of the HBCU golf logo, you have all of the HBCU colleges Mm -hmm. um, listed there and, you know, like I said, if, if somebody audited me for one of, you know, one of the schools that's not accredited, you know, right. we, we make adjustments often on the logo. But um, you have all of the schools listed. All of the schools in black font do not have a golf team. Mm-hmm. All of the schools in color font has a golf team. So what we want to do, Victor, is add more color to this logo. That was the That's creation. Powerful. <laughs> thank, that thank. is very powerful, informative, creative, and insightful. And, Go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. And and um, back to the thought of the camaraderie. So when I started looking into this logo and the design of it, I started thinking about my friends that played at Southern University, played at Grambling, mm-hmm. played at Jackson State. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those programs don't exist anymore. Now, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, we're in 2024. A couple of them just came back, and that's mm-hmm. excellent, and we'll probably get to that a little later in the, in the uh, podcast here. But um, looking at that, knowing that, man, this could do something. This could touch, you know, some of those schools that are now in black fun, but just, you know, some years ago they, they were yeah. in color fun. You know, they had a yeah. team. So that's where the – idea of the logo came about you know and and knowing that this opportunity was there to find um talented kids you know coming from the west coast Mm -hmm. out in phoenix arizona you know this is part of probably why the coaches are asking because they Mm -hmm. need to make sure these programs survive Mm -hmm. uh, which means we need some players so you know back to (laughs) your question where did it come from that all of this came together in my mind and um Besides the logo, I said there there's definitely a need for a platform. So when the coaches call and ask me, you know, it's 20, 2018 at that time, you know, when the coaches call and ask me, I mean, look, we got cell phones and Internet. Right. We don't have to do this by paper anymore. Right. So that's what motivated me to make this an online portal where the kids have the opportunity to have their self notarized by the coaches. The coaches have the opportunity to see all of these kids that are out there and have a data pool to, to search from. Yeah. And so this is another one of those really powerful moments where I'm going to ask the T to green golf podcast community to be of service to others. We all know that there are population transitions taking place across America today. Uh, Proportionally, I think the vast majority of HBCUs are from 
the Mississippi River East. Mm-hmm. Rod talked about his experience being in Arizona and the 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 exchange, the interaction between vacancies on on HBCU teams, but quality golfers that are thousands of miles away. And so I think the other important point here for the for the community is we know that HBCUs today are primarily in support of our African American children, but we also know that they are in support of children of color. That could be our Latin community, whether they are based in the U.S. or whether they've come to the U.S. from other parts of the globe. My ask is that each listener, each follower from Instagram to listening to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, if you are aware of a talented golfer who has an opportunity to play and may not be getting tracked and recruited by the larger institutions, please, upon listening to this, dial, type in hbcu.golf and engage with the portal. We have a critical guest with us today that is creating a change in the arc of life for many students through the sport of golf. And let's, again, be a service to others and help our children get an opportunity to do something that they're excelling at and something that they're passionate about in the spirit of growing the game. Sorry for that that PSA, if you will, but... I love it. <laughs> but I think the other piece of this, Rod, in addition to the portal, is the apparel business. Let's talk a little bit about that. I know we can connect through through the site, but I want you to introduce and share that piece of it as well. Absolutely. So um, the apparel business is, is really the logo um, that you see. And, and you know, we've decided um, how many... Just just understanding how many people love the logo and mm-hmm. love the meaning of the logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, honestly, they love the logo without even understanding the meaning. Right. Uh, once the meaning is there, they, they love it to another level. So um, the apparel business came about like, hey, man, um, if I have to be honest, uh, I like basketball. I like NBA. <laughs> so when I watch uh, TNT, you know, Shaq, Ernie. <laughs> Right. Um, Shaq is always saying, hey, underdog, put that on the T-shirt. <laughs> right. um, that hit one day. Okay. I said, put that logo on the T-shirt. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, I started wearing it myself. And um, everybody I knew that played college golf was like, I wear a size large. Give me, <laughs> give me exactly one. exactly right. You know, um, so the apparel business, um, I never saw myself here in the apparel mm. business at all. Um mm. You know, but but kind of like I said at the beginning there, you know, just being in this space, knowing that you can be creative in this space and um, the apparel business. And, you know, now we're, we're doing T-shirts, we're doing hoodies. Um, we will be expanding some of the products. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of early in the process. So we're we're learning, you know, kind of like I said earlier, we have a lot of updates to the logo. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's the beginning. You mm-hmm. know, it, It's the beginning of it. And uh, the apparel of the shirts and the hoodies is uh, taking off uh, much greater than I expected. So Good. right now we have shirts and hoodies and yeah. um, t-shirts and hoodies uh, and you know, that will expand. Yeah. And, and I can, I can vouch for that. Uh, again, Rod and I met at a HBCU event in, and I guess I can call it South Atlanta in, in October. And I remember walking onto the grounds from the parking lot And seeing two ladies that were wearing maroon HBCU golf T-shirts. And I initially immediately said, hello, where did you get that shirt from? And they directed me around the corner. And so that's where we met. Uh, So I will vouch that the shirt or hoodie, in this case it was a shirt, it is captivating and attractive. And so... Place your order on HBCU Golf. 
and uh, and let's keep it moving from there. I I, I can't tell you, Victor. It, it's a uh, if you wear it in an airport, prepare to be stopped. <laughs> it's okay. a conversation starter, okay. man. Okay. Everybody everybody loves it. It's, it's I run it. You know, I I have all races that have mentioned that they love it. Nice. Um, anybody that wears it, you know. Somebody is stopping you. Yeah. Hey, I like that shirt. I like that hoodie. You know, so so be prepared. Well, <laughs> be and, prepared. And now we know the meaning behind it. Yeah. Right. So we can engage in that conversation Absolutely. deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. We we talked a little bit about it earlier. Um, and you mentioned Jackson State, you mentioned Southern, um, mentioned one other. We know that HBCUs have had golf programs for some time. Some are still around, others have left. Some have been revived. The work that Steph has done on Howard is is absolutely amazing. Um, the partnership between Steph and Howard has brightened the spotlight. When you think about that light today and the work that you're doing, what do you envision HBCU golf looking like over the next 12 to 18 months? Um... Over the next 12 to 18 months, I feel like that spotlight is going to shine brighter. Um, you know, I I, uh, I applaud Steph Curry. Man, that, that's amazing mm-hmm. um, what he was able to do for Howard and, and how how well that program is thriving mm-hmm. now. And, um, you know, I, I think that speaks a little more testimony to the meaning of the logo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a story I love to share um, especially when explaining the logo meaning, mm-hmm. um, what Steph Curry did was amazing and great. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at the logo here, you know, and I, I even bought this for you to, to check it out as I run through that. But if you look at the logo there, you'll notice, you know, about 30, um, 30, a third of the percent of schools in color font. Correct. And, um, what Steph Curry did for Howard was amazing. We, we changed them to color. But the same year, I had to remove Hampton as a golf team to Black Fund because they lost their golf program. So um, what Steph Curry did is amazing. But when you look at that logo, look at all the Black Fund there. That's how many more opportunities we have to do what Steph Curry did. So, so let, me, let me add a conversation piece to the episode. Rod, you know, and I was, I was a student in Norfolk State. You know that more than anything, HBCUs are about legacy. Mm -hmm. When you get on campus, you hear someone whose grandparents went to the Mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Their parents went to the school. Yes, sir. And in many ways, they had a choice, but they didn't have a choice to be next in that line Mm -hmm. of legacy. What is your message to those of us who exist in the corporate space are matriculating through the corporate space, are successful entrepreneurs, how can we begin, not a lot, but a little, because there's volume and numbers, power in numbers, right? Mm-hmm. How, do we, how do we revive this? How do we turn some of the black into colored font on the logo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, to really kind of finish the question before in the next 12 to 18 months with that spotlight getting brighter, um, awareness, you know, let's start mm-hmm. with awareness. Mm-hmm. You know, the more that people can be aware that, you know, what we currently have right now as a third of, you know, how many HBCUs are out there is only represented in golf programs. Right. We'll start with understanding that. Um, from that point, you know, we can look at the programs that had programs before, you know, I love to use Jackson state as an Mm -hmm. example. They won our SWAT championship, uh, over 20 consecutive years Mm -hmm. and coach Payton, he retired and then they lost their program, you know? So, um, I feel like that's a more of a warm opportunity to bring back a program. Um, I think alumni can play a, a huge part in it. Um, and once again, you know, uh, we're starting to see a lot of celebrities pick up Mm -hmm. the game of golf. And, um, I think I definitely have to give credit to, uh, Eastside golf, Mm -hmm. you know, Eastside golf, trap golf, and, um, you know, all the, all the 
golf companies, minority golf companies that are popping up and, and, you know, so our celebrities taking a part of it because the awareness is happening. Correct. Um, I do believe that is how we will start to see um, some of our programs start to come back. You know, if that's within the 12 to 18 months, as you asked there, um, you know, it's going to take, um, awareness from, you know, sponsors and donors right. and, you know, these professional athletes, alumni, and uh, the more we get the name out there and, and the opportunities out there and the understanding of the business opportunities the game of golf create. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing, you know, and I, I love to tell a story uh, when I was living in Arizona. I, I took a couple years out of the golf industry there. Um, I remember interviewing for a job um, in medical sales. And if anybody know, medical sales is difficult to get in. You got to have some experience to do that, right? And um, first of all, the game of golf connected me with one guy who knew this other guy who owned the company. So the connections are endless with yep. the game of golf. Yep. Um, I go to this guy's office to interview for the job. We start talking about golf. We talked about where I worked at, um, <laughs> up at True North, uh, probably about 30 minutes. His son played golf. We talked about golf for about 30 minutes. And when it was time to change that subject, he said, all right, look here. I need a guy to start next week. Like, uh, I like you. What do you think? The interview was over. And I'm like, uh, do you want to see my resume at all? Like, I got the job just from talking about golf. There it is. And I did. You know, it, it's weird. You know, he said, you know, I, I, I like you as a person. And, and I can tell that, you know, for this job, you uh, people have to like people, you know, and, and people buy from people. So, um, you know, I'm saying that to say that this game of golf really can expand your network and um, make some endless connections that you have no clue where they can take you. Powerful point, powerful point. And I think that is the underlying message today. As we talk to these kids in communities of color is that the arc of your life can change if you yeah. embrace the sport. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Well, you know, as we go forward, and again, we met in October, are there any specific programs that you have a strong partnership with, and are you working with more to bring them into the HBCU Golf family? Yeah, so I would say my um, partnership comes with a lot of them that are existing, a lot of the HBCU Golf programs that are existing. Um, I had to take a moment to... Uh, have you understand where it comes from? And that's from, you know, my business of T-Vents, golf mm -hmm. management, organizing mm -hmm. golf tournaments. I had the opportunity to work with the uh, BCGCA, the Black yep. College Golf Coaches Association, uh, run by uh, Coach Leonard Smoot yep. at the yep. time right now. And um, Shout out to Coach Smoot. Shout out to Coach Smoot. That's my guy. <laughs> um, but, you know, just the opportunity to be around all of the uh, golf coaches, uh, you know, that take part in, in the BCGCA tournaments and the tournament that you came to, which was mm -hmm. a National Black College Alumni Hall of Fame. Correct. Um, run by Mr. Uh, the late, great Mr. Tommy uh, Dorch. Yes. Dorch Jr. That's exactly Yes, sir. Okay. So um, this past year was the 38th annual. That was a tournament I played in when I was in college. Um Really? You know, so I, I'm so fortunate to have the opportunity to manage that tournament and uh, make it as great as I can, you know, representing Mr. Dorch and his legacy mm -hmm. he's left behind. But um, really, uh, you know, to to kind of make sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, That's all right. Just the program that you have a relationship yeah. with. To, yeah. to make sure, um, you know, that my work with HBCU golf is helping all of the HBCU college programs. Um, I have those connections with the ones that I see, but yeah, I, I do need the other programs that the coaches that are not coming to these tournaments understand what's out there. And what's really mm -hmm. exciting that's about to happen is a, a fundraiser for a lot of the colleges that I work with. So, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, basically when, when you join this site, uh, you'll, you'll see those, uh, late January here. Mm-hmm. And, um, the, the, we are, we are sending, uh, a large number of the proceeds to each golf team. Nice. Uh, from the apparel sales. Nice. So, um, this, you know, that this is just more inside information that I know, you know, a lot of times, um, the golf programs get overlooked by our uh, athletic departments. Okay. And, um, you know, I do understand how to make sure um, the golf program receive One the thing. benefits. Right, absolutely. <laughs> the, the funding, you know. So so um, the schools that are going to be participating, they're very excited about it. And, you know, when you ask that question of who do I have a close relationship, you know, like I say, I, I like to say, um, all of them that really yep. come and compete in the tournament, and that's usually over 20 plus teams. Um, I don't know if you really ask me to go down the list and name them, but, um, you know, any other, other school, HBCU schools that are out there, um, I can definitely easily get in contact with them and make sure they are part of the network as we continue to push and grow the HBCU golf community as well. We're coming to the, we're coming to the end of, of our conversation today. And one of the things that I ask every guest is how can the T Green Golf Podcast community help and support HBCU golf? Yes, sir. Um, thank you, T to the Green Podcast community, for for listening in and making it to this point of the, the interview. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so if you are here, the way that you can support is uh, – Let's start off with social media. You know, follow us on social media, HBCU Golf on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, we have TikTok. Uh, no videos yet, really, but we have TikTok. Um, but really, uh, Instagram is probably our, our key source right now um, to follow us on the social media side. And um, awareness, you know, um, once again, as you mentioned earlier, if you have any kids that are playing the sport of golf, uh, please do not think at one moment that your kid is not good enough to mm-hmm. be a part of this uh, community that we are creating. It does not matter their score and how good they are and what level they are at the game of golf. You put them on that portal. Mm-hmm. And um, once again, all of our HBCU coaches will have access to view all of our kids. Um, what that turns into is, um, you know, I, I like I said, I played golf in college. Um, golf teams, you know, financially don't have a lot of money, scholarship mm-hmm. money. Um, so, unfortunately, I know who Sally May is. <laughs> and, um, you know. Nice. Yeah, Sally, yeah, Sally May. <laughs> um, you know, so. I also love what I'm doing because, you know, just understanding, you know, the, the financial opportunities out in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love for no kid coming up to know who Sally Mae is. Right. Absolutely. And, um, you know, to, to be able to find opportunities for scholarships through the game of golf, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a great thing. You know, it takes me to a thought of one of my, uh, kids that I, I had the opportunity to help out um, when I met him at the driving range at John A. White and um, great kid, amazing kid, uh, played multiple sports, mm-hmm. um, golfing as well. And um, I don't think him or his father really knew they had the opportunity to play college golf at that mm-hmm. time when I met him. And, um, you know, due to HBCU golf and the connections and the community that I'm a part of mm-hmm. with this, um, he mentioned that, you know, he made a phone call to my alma mater, um, Alabama A&M, and he hasn't, hasn't heard back. I said, hold on one second, you know, and, and I make a phone call. Um, and that's so you know, that the parent is talking with the coach 20 minutes later. So, um, the kid game improved, um, shout out to Bryson. He's an amazing kid. Yes. Um, his game improved and I'm, I'm so happy to say, that uh, he's on the Alabama A&M golf team as we speak now. Congratulations. Um, on, and he received some scholarship as well. And um, I can't see, keep saying enough, he's an amazing kid. I mean, 4.0 GPA. Yes. Amazing kid. You know, so um, just understand, community, that no matter the level your child is at, 
um, you know, we can find help. And, you know, just coming in the future with HBCU Golf, it's a recruiting portal right now. Right. But wherever you live, if that's Arizona, California, Texas, um, Mississippi, wherever, the future of HBCU Golf will start providing some coaches in that area. Mm. And, um, you know, we, we will all be connected. So yep. we want to develop this talent. Uh, we want to make kids better at the game of golf, you know, so we do actually have this talent. So, um, you know, back to the question, awareness is, is the first thing that I think the community can, can really help out on. Um, you know, uh, we have some people in the, in the community that, um, have some strong position in financial areas. Right. We need sponsors. We need, um, all kind of funding resources. Um, you know, HBCU golf, uh, we'll have future events as well nice. um, that, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I don't want to give too many details as it, as we're still ironing it out, but um, this will be different from the typical golf tournament. And it will be something that we have not seen before uh, to give kids the opportunity to showcase their talent in front of our HBCU coaches. Um, so, you know, following us on social media directly, uh, HBCU golf and, um, making sure your kid is a part of that portal. Um, that is how the community can really help HBCU golf and our community with our kids that could be looking at some future opportunities. Excellent answer. And Rod offered a number of States, and, and I'm going to add one more, and that's the state of Minnesota. Um, Minnesota is very close to, to my heart for some very obvious reasons. I lived there for 15 years. Uh, I know there's some really good work there, and, and I'll, introduce, I'll introduce Rod to that work. But we've had an amazing conversation today, um, an inspiring point in the sport of golf as it grows the game, um, elevating the arc of the sport and its relevancy across all communities that have the ability to play the game. Uh, it has been truly informing. Uh, I would just ask that as we close this episode out that you all familiarize yourself with the website, which is hbcu.golf. Thank you. Rod, thank you for taking some time. I know that you're an extremely busy person, oh, and we've gone back and forth and getting you into the studio today. And stay tuned. We are just launching season two of Calendar Year Golf Year 2024. Thank you from Rod, from myself, from the Canon Studios. As we always say, hit it straight from T to Green. We are out.